In America alone, it's estimated that around 200 million people consume box cereals. But how is cereal manufactured? The most important raw material in any breakfast cereal is grain. The grains most commonly used are corn, wheat, oats, rice, and barley. Some hot cereals, such as plain oatmeal, and a few cold cereals, such as plain shredded wheat, contain no other ingredients. Most breakfast cereals contain other ingredients, such as salt, yeast, sweeteners, flavoring agents, coloring agents, vitamins, minerals, and preservatives. The first step is the cultivation of these grains on farms. Farmers plant the seeds in suitable soil, and the crops are carefully tended until they mature. Once the grains have ripened, they are harvested. Harvesting methods vary depending on the type of grain, but typically involve combine harvesters which can perform several functions in one pass. The first step in the harvesting process is cutting the mature crop. The cutting mechanism varies depending on the type of harvester used. Combines often have a cutting header equipped with a rotating blade or sickle bar that cuts the stalks near the ground. Once the crop is cut, the next step is threshing, which involves separating the grains from the rest of the plant. Threshing mechanisms within the harvester remove the grain kernels from the straw or husks. This can be achieved through the use of rotating cylinders, concaves, and beaters. After threshing, the separated grains are cleaned to remove any remaining chaff, straw, or other debris. This is typically done using sieves, fans, and other separation mechanisms within the harvester. Once the grains arrive at the factory, they are cleaned once again through processes like sieving and winnowing to remove any impurities. After cleaning, the grains undergo drying to reduce moisture content, ensuring they can be stored without the risk of spoilage. Here's where the cereal making begins. The whole grains are weighed in a specific amount and go into an industrial version of a pressure cooker. The operator locks the lid and the whole grains are mixed with flavoring agents, salt, and water through a system that directly feeds them into the pressure cooker. During this process, vitamins and minerals are also added to the mixture in a process known as fortification. The time, temperature, and speed of rotation vary with the type of grain being cooked. Usually whole wheat grains only need an hour of cooking. Once the cooking is complete, the machine is turned off and its vents are opened, allowing the grains to cool down. Once cooled, the grains are emptied onto a conveyor and resume their journey. Some of the grains become lumped during the cooking process and are de-lumped to break the lumps into single units. The cooked grains are allowed to dry under controlled temperatures, stabilizing the moisture content of each grain. Remember, these grains absorbed a lot of moisture during the cooking. Typically, after cooking, the grains have a moisture percentage of 30% and it is brought down to 19% after drying. This process is known as tempering. The tempered grains are flattened between large metal rollers under tons of pressure. The resulting flakes are conveyed to ovens where they are tossed in a blast of very hot air to remove remaining moisture and to toast them to a desirable color and flavor. To make puffed cereals, rice or wheat is used. The rice grains require no pretreatment, but the wheat grains must be treated to partially remove the outer layer of bran. This may be done by abrading it off between grindstones, a process known as purling. It may also be done by soaking the wheat grains in salt water. The salt water toughens the bran, which allows it to break off in large pieces during puffing. The grain is placed in the gun, a small vessel that can hold very hot steam and very high pressure. The gun is opened quickly to reduce the pressure suddenly. The sudden release of pressure results in the rapid expansion of the water vapor inside the grains. This causes the grains to puff up, creating the characteristic light and airy texture of puffed cereals. After the explosive expansion, the puffed grains are allowed to cool. This step is crucial for solidifying the structure of the puffed cereal and ensuring that it retains its expanded shape. Shredded cereals can also be made using the same process as flake cereals. The wheat is cooked in boiling water to allow moisture to fully penetrate the grain. The cooked grain is cooled and allowed to temper. It is then rolled between two metal rollers. One roller is smooth and the other one is grooved. The metal comb is positioned against the grooved roll with a tooth inside each groove. The cooked grain is shredded by the teeth of the comb and dropped off the rollers in a continuous ribbon. A conveyor belt catches the ribbons from several pairs of rollers and piles them up in layers. The layers of shredded wheat are cut to the proper size and then baked to the desired color and dryness. Granolas and similar products are made by mixing grain, usually oats and other ingredients like nuts, fruits, flavors, etc., and cooking them on a conveyor belt that moves through an oven. The cooked mixture is then crumbled to the desired size. Several other varieties of cereals use flour instead of grains. To start the process, the flour is first cooked inside a cooking extruder. This device consists of a long screw within a heated housing. The motion of the screw mixes the flour with water, flavoring, salt, sweeteners, vitamins, minerals, and sometimes food coloring. The screw moves this mixture through the extruder, cooking it as it moves along. 
At the end of the extruder, the cooked dough emerges as a ribbon. A rotating knife cuts the ribbon into pellets. These pellets are then processed in a variety of shapes to make different cereals. After the cereals have been puffed, shredded, or flaked, and then roasted to give them the crispy consistency, they are coated with sweeteners and flavors such as fruit juices, food colors, or preservatives to give them an additional bit of kick, color, and shelf life. Cereals may also be frosted. Frosting is applied by spraying a thick hot syrup of sugar on the cereal in a rotating drum. As it cools, the syrup dries into a white layer of frosting. Finally, it's time for packaging. An automated machine packages the cereal at a rate of about 40 boxes per minute. The box is assembled from a flat sheet of cardboard which has been previously printed with a desired pattern for the outside of the box. The bottom and sides of the box are sealed with a strong glue. The bag is formed from moisture-proof plastic and inserted into the box. The cereal fills the bag and the bag is tightly sealed by heat. The top of the box is sealed with a weak glue which allows the consumer to open it easily. The completed boxes of cereal are packed into cartons which usually hold 12, 24, or 36 boxes and shipped to the retailer. Throughout the entire manufacturing process, rigorous quality control measures are in place to ensure that the cereal meets safety and quality standards. This includes testing for factors like texture, taste, nutritional content, and shelf life. Once packaged, the cereals are distributed to retailers and markets. Marketing strategies play a crucial role in promoting cereals, often highlighting nutritional benefits, taste, and convenience to attract customers. So the next time you're chewing your Cheerios, feasting on your Frosties, or savoring your sugar puffs, you can truly appreciate the products because you know just about everything they go through to arrive at your breakfast table.